Welcome everyone to People on Dating. I'm your host, Will Moraz. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this podcast is about the ups and downs of dating and how to navigate through it. Today, my guest is Dr. Laura, Lori Mintz. He's an author, therapist, speaker, uh, emeritus professor whose life's work has been committed to helping people live more authentic, meaningful, joyful, and sexually satisfying lives. Dr. Laura, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. No, it's my pleasure. So Dr. Lori, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. What was that journey like to become a therapist, author, speaker, all that good stuff that you've been doing uh, for a while? What was that journey like? What was that aha moment for you? Well, I've been a therapist for a very long time um, and specialized in eating disorders. And then I'd say about 2008, so a long time ago now, I sort of had this aha moment that I wasn't trained to talk to my clients about sex, that if I asked them without doubt, most of them had a sexual concern. Most of my friends had sexual concerns. And I started thinking, this is like really important, yet it's left out of our most, you know, important, you know, conversations, the ones with our therapists, where we're supposed to be able to speak anything. Nice. So I thought we need to do better. So I got, I dug deep, I got a lot of training, and I fell in love with the field of sex therapy. And basically now I pretty much live and breathe it. Nice. You know, I teach a class in human sexuality at the University of Florida. Um, I've written a couple books on sexuality. I give talks. I train physicians and other psychologists now. So it's been quite a rewarding journey. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine. And we'll definitely talk about those books, especially, you know, I think one of the, the best titles you ever, it's ever been published is being clitorate, right? Am I got that? Do I got the title right? <laughs> yeah, becoming yeah. clitorate. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think, one of the best titles I ever saw in a book. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, today's topic is the orgasm gap. Uh, how I found Lori was I just happened to see an article about the orgasm gap and, and the difference between when men ejaculate versus women. And, and that was so fascinating that I had to add, have Dr. Lori on. So, OK, Dr. Lori, just get, let's get right into it. What is it that men are not doing correctly? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I want to say I don't blame individual men. I blame culture. I blame what culture has taught men and women. Okay. And what culture has taught men and women is you do a little fooling around. You put your penis in her vagina and that's how you both have an orgasm. And that's not the truth. And it's the reason that women are having so many fewer orgasms than men. For women, only 4% orgasm from penetration alone, 4%. Wow. Yeah. The rest need clitoral stimulation, either alone or coupled with penetration. So clitoral stimulation, meaning the outside area of a woman's genitals. And just to drive that point home further so people really get it, when women masturbate, less than 2% do so exclusively by putting something in their vagina. Wow. So there's a disconnect, right, between what women know they need alone and what's happening in partner sex. That is, I, I can't, you know, it's funny because uh, I remember talking to uh uh, an acquaintance of mine this is years ago and you know man and he was telling me oh no I, I never you know go down on a woman uh I just use my you know penis and that does enough and I'm like I don't know in my mind I'm like yeah okay you know because I know that women that I've known that were friends girlfriends whatever they want stimulation foreplay and all that not just straight up sex so is it that the men are afraid to ask a woman what she likes or they're assuming that, I mean, because every woman is different. Some women like when you, you know, go down south, some don't. Um, some like foreplay to extend more than 10, 15, 20 minutes, I guess, you know, uh, that's why you're here. Um, is there a disconnect between maybe asking a woman what she likes or pretending to know what she likes? Yeah, so I think a, like, I think you're absolutely right. Every what every woman wants is different, mm -hmm. but we do know that the vast majority aren't going to orgasm without clitoral stimulation. And a lot of times men don't ask, they assume either what worked for their last partner is going to work or what they've seen in movies and porn is going to work, which rarely does, right? That's 
it's it's for entertainment, not education. Right. And and um, so the most important thing that you can do is to ask a woman, hey, what would turn you on? What would you like to actually say your pleasure is important to me? What's going to work for you? And ask and take directions, basically. Right. Uh, so I, I guess men are just too embarrassed to say that because, and I remember, I, again, another acquaintance, a woman told me, oh, man, should no. know. Well, I mean, every woman is different. Just like you said, every relationship is different. You know what? A woman could be more aggressive. Uh, an ex-girlfriend could be more. And then the next girlfriend is, you know, wants you to do the move. Um, so, you know, if, and Dr. Laurie, are women also not uh, being forthright on, on telling the man what uh, what they like, yes. uh, whether it's a body movement or, or, or maybe taking their hand or just... I don't know, any type of uh, body movement that a woman could do to say, oh, okay, this, guy, this she wants it this way. Let me continue. Yeah. So a lot of times women, unfortunately, have also been socialized that I've had women tell me, oh my gosh, I couldn't ask a first time partner for clitoral stimulation. It's too pushy. And my response is, it's not pushy. It's what you need. They're, they're doing what they need. So, you know, I do encourage men to ask and I encourage women to tell and sometimes a really in tune lover can tell by size, moans, body movements, but sometimes you don't know and it's okay to ask, do you like this? Or for the woman to say, keep doing that. And, you know, it's just, it's really, I think the most important thing is to ask. And here's something I really want men to know. This is mm. so important. When asked if penis size is important, the overwhelming majority of women say no. And when asked open-ended questions about how what's most important to you during a sexual encounter, none mention penis size. They say a partner who asks what I want, a partner who makes it clear my pleasure is important. So the idea of men really knowing women's bodies and communicating, it doesn't just help women, it helps men. It takes the pressure off all this unrealistic stuff about lasting long, thrusting hard, having a big penis. It's, it just helps everybody. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that, um, uh, having a discussion with a buddy of mine. And, uh, I remember he was telling me that, uh, a girl that he was dating, he asked her straight out, was he, was his, uh, his bigger than mine. And yes, men obsess over it. Men think about it. You know, like you said, the, uh, how uh, to me how porn is shitty because you know you got these guys that are you know well endowed and then the guy that's the average guy that's watching I'm like oh man girls like that you know because you and it's funny because you do hear some women say no it doesn't matter but if if a woman does say it matters is this something that's missing in from her that she says that or is it more of of just a visually pl pleasing uh, uh plus size penis <laughs> so here, the, the men in porn, let me just say, are in the like upper 98th percentile of penis size. Right. Most men aren't that big, right? Yeah. And most women, except a very few, usually the the 4% who come during intercourse are the only ones that are saying it's important. You know, it doesn't, you know, there's somebody out there for everyone, right? right. So, you know, um, and I, I think I lost track of your question. I'm sorry, but I, I guess the point is, that it's not anything lacking in her or him. It's just personal preference. But over men obsess way too much. But And I always tell my students, stop making dick size jokes because <laughs> A, it fuels insecurity. 100%, and yeah. B, it also perpetuates lies I'm about female pleasure. I tell my students, st start joking about the flexibility of their tongues and hands instead. Like that. That is something more accurate. So, you know, it really helps everyone if everybody knew how women orgasm. Right. So what would be if you could, uh, and we talked with Dr. Lori Mintz, today's uh, topic is the orgasm gap. So Dr. Lori, what's, I guess for a guy that's maybe in the early to mid twenties, you know, they're starting out they're dating, they, you know, they're sleeping with women, but to become a better lover, are there one or two, three steps that you could like recommend that they start with, uh, you know, fondling a breast, legs, uh, what would, what would you say to those young guys that are starting out that are looking to become better lovers? 
the first thing they need to learn is getting comfortable talking to their partners about sex. Yeah. Period. End of story. Because there's no one size fits all and communication takes care of it. And just to be able to say to someone like your pleasure is important to me. Mm. I hope you'll tell me what you want. That that would be like so good. Right. For everyone, you know, and then knowing about women's bodies, learning about the vulva, the clitoris, you do some readings. There's some great books I can recommend. But mostly ask your partner what she wants. Oh, and don't be afraid of vibrators. They do not replace partners. They don't cuddle. They don't kiss. They don't laugh. All they do is provide really intense stimulation that a lot of women can't orgasm without. So even saying to a woman, please tell me what you want. Your pleasure is important. And by the way, if you want to bring a vibrator along to our encounter, I'm good with whatever works for you. Believe me, the women, they're rep, they that is going to make them the best lover, really. Yeah. Wow. So uh, you recommend uh, toys, the vibrator, anything else that might stimulate a woman besides obviously you going down on her, you know, is how important or uh, is the uh, is the technique when a man is uh, is going down on a woman is the technique that important is it are we using fingers tongue anything it useful it depends on the woman oh, no, it all depends on the woman okay got it but there's a gr if if oral sex is what you want yes that's what I meant yes sorry <laughs> no no it's all good there's a great book by Ian Kerner called She Comes First a Gentleman's Guide to Pleasuring a Woman it's an oral sex how to man Right. And I also, in my book, I have, I don't have like how to, but I have a summary chapter for men at the end, just telling them how to communicate about women's vulvas, all kinds of things. So, you know, there's, there's good resources out there. Just don't use porn as a role model. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I think, you know, uh, uh, some men use porn as the role because they see, again, you know, you, you're talking about, like you said, the, what is it, the 98 percent uh, uh, percentile of guys that that's why they're there, you know, and it's usually and I remember I was reading a story. That's why you see always the same guys in, there, in, in multiple scenes because not, you know, again, it's more visually pleasing. And it's just like you said, it's I guess I could say it's just art, I guess, or BS art, you know, because it's not real. Because I've interviewed doctors and they say, hey, that's not real. You know, this is, you know, you're just sticking it in and the woman's groaning and moaning. Um, How important is touch in a relationship? Uh, you know, uh, being affectionate, does that help at the beginning and to get the woman comfortable, you know, uh, you know, touching the arm, touching her back, maybe a little bit of her neck, Um. How important is, is it's the very important. Do not just like, don't just hop in bed and go for the genitals. Right. right. Like, like, you know, I always talk about sex as like a, a three act play. Okay. The first act is you're, you know, assessing the interest, right. You're yeah. warming up, you're getting to know each other. Act two is a lot of foreplay, a lot of kissing, a lot of caressing and you need to spend at least 20 minutes on that at least 20 minutes it takes that long for a woman to feel comfortable and aroused enough and a lot still don't they'll use lubricant and then there's intercourse right and but i want people to understand that intercourse doesn't have to last a long time the average amount of time is two minutes to like six minutes okay oh, wow. that's not what you see in porn and women don't want it to last. Most women don't want it to last longer. It gets boring. It gets painful. That's why women fake. So making sure, and also making sure that you use, you in your mind, you see the foreplay as just as important as the intercourse, right? Because right. the foreplay is just, that sex to women. That's when they're going to orgasm. The intercourse is when you're going to orgasm often. So right. making sure you view those as equal is going to go a long way. So that's that's real important. In in uh, let's talk about more about foreplay. So you know you're touching, you're feeling, um, and let's say you get into 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 bed. Are putting a woman in different positions does that help? Does it matter? You know, having her on her back and maybe. Uh, doing oral sex from ask behind. Her, yeah, go ahead. Ask her. 
Ask, ask her. Me. It's always about asking her what she like. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so first of all, Dr. Lord, thank you so much for being on um, people on dating. My God, I'm learning and I'm a you know a 61 year old man. So let's talk about the older generation. Do they still need um uh you know a teaching, especially men over 40, 50, because they it, used to yeah, go ahead. It, yeah. Well, it depends on the man, right? If yeah. he's if he's never had a woman, like a lot of times by the time men are 40, 50, 60, they know. How do they know? Because they've been in a relationship with someone who's told them. Right. But I still meet 40, 50, 60 year old men who either heard and didn't listen, heard and didn't believe, heard and make their partner feel like she's the weird one and their that their partner's the anomaly, not porn. So everyone can learn everyone can learn it's never too late to learn i, I, I definitely so dr Lori, um just a couple more questions um i guess that like i guess the biggest thing that i've uh, you know when i talk to some of my friends whether they're young or older is always trying to get over that hurdle of asking right because it's it could be embarrassing if you know if the woman says oh how come you don't know or vice versa but more so on the man asking the woman on the man's side, what is how can they approach that subject without feeling ashamed? Because I think that's always going to come into play. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, first of all, I want to tell you, those are going to be like this, you know, there's going to be a lot more shame if you don't ask, because she's probably going to go home and tell her friends that wasn't very good. Right. So, so think about that as your pep talk. And women know that women appreciate being asked. They, I know very few women that would say, you should already know that, but instead would be like, wow, he really cares. So the, the, the shame, if get into the attitude that the shame is not asking. Okay. No, I'm perfectly said. Anyway, again, Dr. Lori, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. And before I let you go, talk about your books uh, that you, uh, you have out. And you know, um, you have more books in you. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. So the first one's called A Tired Woman's Guide to Passionate Sex. And I'm guessing it's not going to be as interesting to your audience. It's for women, usually 35 and over, who've lost their drive. But the next okay. book is, I think, going to be very interesting. It's called Becoming Cliterate, Why Orgasm okay. Equality Matters and How to Get It. And it's all about women's pleasure. And there's a summary chapter for men. It teaches sexual communication skills, the anatomy of a vulva, how women orgasm. It does some addressing of men's sexual concerns. And what I'm really proud of is a published scientific study shows that men who read it become better lovers. Yeah, okay. No, I'll definitely put that on the show. And I'll put uh, the article, how I found you, also on... Um on the show notes and talk about your TEDx talk. Uh, when did you do that? Uh, Cause I did see it and I was like, wow, I was definitely uh, amazed. You're a great speaker. You're a great teacher. So talk more about your TEDx talk. Well, the TEDx talk was came about as sort of a summary of the book after the book did pretty well. And people were saying like, this is good stuff. I got asked to do that talk. So it's like a 12 minute version yeah. of like the, like the, Becoming clear, it is a cultural analysis. Why do we have the orgasm gap? And then skills to fix it. And the TEDx talk is really like a very short summary of why we have the cultural problem. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, anything else you would like to promote? Um, no, I, I think that's it. And I, you know, just really hope that the men out there get the message. The, the other thing I want to say is I, I am not of the mindset like many people are that the reason for the orgasm gap is men don't care. I think men care a lot. They right. want to yes. please partners. 100%, yes. But 100%, very few don't, right? And, but they, you all men have been misled by culture yeah. about what is it. And so this can be very freeing for you. No, and definitely. What you want, which is to please a partner. Oh, no, 100%. And if somebody want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? The best way is to look at my website, www.drlorimintz.com. And from there, you can find all the other ways. I'm very active on Instagram, for example, and Facebook. And my handle for all that's the same, Dr. Lori Mintz. Dr. Lori Mintz. So 
Yeah, I'll, again, I'll definitely put that on the show as well. Thank anyway, you. Dr. Laurie, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. This was definitely enlightening. I really had a good time talking to you. And again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for having me on. Bye-bye. <laughs>